home and the town for hometown for Nanaya Asantua. Nanaya Asantua was the female war general, the brave woman that led the Ashantis to fight the British in their last war, 1900. Her, her statue was right in the middle of the road, but the reconstruction of the road has affected it. So when there is, the construction is done, they're going to replace it. Okay. Uh, right from here, we're going to, we're starting our, we're going to Bonyure. Bonyure is B-O-N-W-I-R-E, like bone wire, but it's Bonyure. Uh, Bonyure is noted for the Kente cloth. I must be honest, Kente cloth is not only, only woven in Ghana, or it's not only woven in Asante. Kente cloth is woven in Asia and the South America. In West Africa, we have Kente being woven in Burkina Faso, Niger, Mali, some parts of Senegal. The mud cloth, the mud cloth is a version of Kente, but that is woven with cotton, whereas the Kente from here is woven with rayon. With what? Rayon, rayon. So it's woven with cotton, and after weaving, then they will do, they will, they will make into the mud cloth. They will dye it and make it a mud cloth. So that is a, a version. But Ashanti Kente has been widely marketed and distributed. Kente is a very important cloth. It is not for everyday use. It's for important occasions. Mostly when we have the swearing in ceremony of a president, a new president, the parliamentarians, or somebody is having a very memorable occasion, then they will use Kente. Uh, Kente, as it is, has various types and kinds. Depending on which type you're buying, the price differs. A single weave kente takes relatively less time than the double weaving kente. And the multiple weaving kente takes a longer time and mind set. I mean, mind, I mean to employ your faculties. With a single weave kente, if you just take out your shoes and sit down on the loom, a uh, little practice, 10 minutes time, you'll be able to know how to weave. Oh. Yes. What? And for the origin, I don't know, but uh, it will all depend on the literatures. So it depends on which which part did they document the literature before. And I guess the Asian might have documented their literature before ours. But here, they even say Kente originates from Bonyure. But we know that it, that is a that technology was transferred somewhere here. What I can say is that the very finest Kente in the world is woven here in Ghana and in Ghana here in Asante Bonyure. And indeed Ghana has a patent for the kente cloth. Because we have marketed it, we have popularized it. So Ghana has a patent. About 19, 2006 thereof, we obtained the patent for the kente. Yeah, the patent right for kente. So a single woven kente uh, the, 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 normally, the, they, had, they are there in names. Somebody weaves a kente and tells you that's the end of wisdom. A juni asa. I can't think further from what I have done. So we have that. Somebody weaves a kente and says, Oh, I think Michelle Obama has a kente right. Eh, no. Say Michelle Obama or kente home. 
when Michelle Obama and then Michelle were coming here, they properly, purposely made a kinti for her. So it becomes Michelle Obama. And then we have Fatia Fata Nkrumah. Our first president, when you visited the museum, married an Egyptian called Fatia. So somebody will weaves a kente and give it says, uh, uh, Fatia really deserves Nkrumah, or vice versa, Nkrumah really deserves Fatia. <clears throat> Some is called Sikafutro, the gold dust. Some of the kente kinds are exclusive preserve for the Ashanti kings and queens. Exclusive for the Ashanti kings and queens. And so these are the names that they have. So it depends on which one you are holding or you are touching, the prices differ. So um, most of those names I've mentioned are multiple woven. Time has been spent in weaving it. Time has been spent in the weaving of those cloth. And with a very simple one, the men, men can take comes about between nine and 12 yards, one piece. So if I see the man wearing it, it covers, he's still holding a greater part of it. The female can take comes in six yards, but it's two, two, two. It will come at three pieces put together. And it can either be a single, a double, or multiple. If you want to buy the very high female kente, you may range between 500 and 800 Ghana C. That's about uh, 150 to 200, depending on your bargaining power. Kente weaving is mostly, is mostly by men. It's a man industry. That the weaving is man industry. But some few women also weave. It's mostly by the traditional one by men because this machine, the structure that is set up, is designed favors men. Because women, when you become pregnant, it will be difficult for you to weave because you have a balance so close and touching your tummy. So if you are carrying a baby, you can't do that. You can't weave. And you know how in customer service, how you would have disappointed your old people who ordered you to do some job for them. But I bet you, there were two girls that I know of in this village, in Bonyuri, when they weave, men approach them to learn the intricacies that they used. Two ladies, I don't know if they're still around. Uh, uh, so I guess, you know, what's that more? Okay, one is passed. That one. They are very good weavers. And you also realize that apart from our main, our usual market, our regular market, the tourist market is dominated by men. Men are the very aggressive ones. So also. In looking for a woman, men had a very aggressive. In our part, it will, if your fellow man, woman, should hear that you kind of express your feeling about how you find about a woman, then they think you are weak. That should you should you should yes that no here that's our side. If you are able to appreciate, you see a man, you like the man. You hear the person will be adopting antiques that will make the man realize, but she cannot express her feeling. Because when you do that, we say, oh, she gave me scholarship. Gave you what? Scholarship. Scholarship. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, you know, scholarship, when you go to school, you pay for, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you are given scholarship, somebody, it, it, it means that I did not struggle. You know, and that do, and if other women hear that, if other women hear that they think that the woman is she has cheapened herself. So the one so when a man a man is approaching a woman, she wants it, she is still showing, pulling, pulling, I mean drawing back. Yes. And see how yeah, how to get. They're making you hard to get it. Yes. So <laughs> yeah, so so that is how come when you go to the market, you see the man being very, very aggressive, approaching you to sell things for you. Most of our, most of our women are very passive, but they own most of the shops. Yes. But they are just sitting down. They want you to come by and buy. That is the the, the ideal shopping situation, right? But the guys will let you have the ideal shopping way. We're going to go take you to uh, see the weaving. The bus will stop on the main road, then we we'll just walk about some five, three minutes to the weaving center. The weaving center you can buy, you can see them weaving, but on the side of the road, both sides of the road, you have the shops are open. These are all, they sell nothing but kente. This time we're going to nothing but kente. I should say 90% of the, uh, the town's survival is dependent on kente directly or indirectly. Mm -hmm. So that's what you expect to get there. But we expect you to bargain. See, this is a phone and this is a mic. I really need a phone. So I got into the shop. The shop attendant is watch is walking, looking uh, was watching, looking at your demeanor. What is this lady's prime object mm -hmm. and your prime object is the phone so naturally say, oh yes this is the phone I've been looking for okay then he or she knocks the head so you know that by all means you're gonna buy the phone so when you ask the price of the phone the premium is on the phone right Naturally, that's it. If you are craving for it, I sell it to you. But the trick I want you to know is that if you see the phone and the microphone, rush on the microphone. Sway their mind. Then casually, as you are asking about the price for the microphone, casually just ask the price of the phone. He or she is going to give it to you without thinking about it. So when you are able to get this one, you play with the microphone, oh, I'm gonna come back to the microphone. And he believes you're gonna come back. So don't rush on the piece that you want. That's right. Now on the right hand side, we have an oil palm plantation. Oh, okay. oil palm. The palm wine you drank, mm -hmm. when we're going to the orphanage, is made from this tree. Okay. The way these trees are growing, maybe the next five years, you come here, they will all be lying on the ground because the fruiting level would have reduced with old age. So when we do that, we will prune the uh, leaves area and make and tap the palm wine out of it. For now, what we are using, we are using the fruit to make the red oil. That's a premium. The prime reason why we are, they are cultivated here, there's a, a meal have been oil meal that where they where they make the palm oil but when they realize that the fruiting level is low is it has it has decreased they would want to plant new ones so you fell this one you tap the palm wine the first three days palm wine is sweet very sweet little alcohol but if you follow the sweetness you may get yourself drunk <laughs> and when palm wine is still that sweet, we call it the ladies' wine. That one is good for the ladies. But as it stays, we say it's a natural alcohol, it builds up. By evening, by afternoon, when we return from the farms, 
then we visit the palm wine tapas hut and we sit down and they bring us our pot with our calabashes and we are sipping then we discuss city or town issues that's the time we discuss oh did you find did you see those ladies that came to town oh they came with some men maybe that's their husbands and blah 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 if palm wine stays for long it becomes so hot you can't drink it raw so we'll distill it and you know you know the idea of moonshine yeah. we call uh, we also call palm wine here moonshine because the british realized that our people would distill palm wine and take the hard liquor they banned its distillation and brought in dry gin from london yeah. see they don't want you to advance in technology they don't want you to provide employment for your people marketing will only take about maybe five or ten people to do it but if you were to distill it you can employ about 100 people they don't want that one so that is how come don't and somebody keeps on you have you, you you haven't done it in the past oh take this amount of money take it but then take it with your mind because the person is trying to control your mind they want you to get addicted if i'm the one always providing the day i say hey you're gonna do it right if you are doing something and i'm the one financing you if i say this one you don't do it you know the finance are not gonna come so you don't do it but that was what that was maybe that would have been your liber your liberty or your, your liberation so uh-huh when we stay so when we distill palm wine i mean uh, the hard liquor you know we respect our in-laws especially the the mother-in-law but if they are interfering in the marriage you go take a couple of you go and hire a lawyer and address her so we also call it address your in-law you talk you know speaking to somebody is different i'm speaking to you now if i'm talking to you you realize yes this is this is not this is not speech i'm talking talking is somebody telling somebody somebody things that the person is doing and you don't like talk to your son it means that sit him down let him know who i am but if i'm speaking to you oh how are you that is that is speaking to speaking and talking are the same thing but the one is harsher hey i don't like that yesterday you did this i'm talking to you oh yesterday you did that we i'm complimenting that is speak i'm speaking oh, to you yeah. okay here we are in bonyuri mm -hmm. we'll continue